Okay, so um, I'll just cover those things that I've said before so it's in the recording. Uh, this tutorial is going to go through some basic modeling techniques to make to the start of a character. It's um, going to look at things like um, uh, extrude, bridging, interactive split tool, etc. etc. Um, I'm also going to go through some sort of good flow work for a pr good practice workflow tips. Okay, so the first thing you want to really do um, when you when you sort of start in um, a project is obviously uh, set the project. Now uh, I'm saying that, but then every uh, it's an absolutely blooming obvious thing to do. But I was told by um, another member of staff yesterday that some third years still weren't doing that. Uh, I'm not. I'm making the assumption that everyone's going to do that from now on. I won't bang on it about it, but essentially you need to be organised. Um, as you can see, I've got the, uh, the 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 character that I showed you last week uh, in there, ready to start. I've not got a side view. I'm just going to sort of. I'm going to wing it a little bit, um, but it's kind of a generic character, and I'm, I'm okay with that. So, but I'd recommend you guys get a side view as well if if that's what you're interested in in doing. You'll also notice that. Um, I open this up, I've put it on reference so I can't select it. This is just a guide at the moment to sort of get you get, get you going essentially. Um, okay, so and also some sort of points that you, you might want to be interested in. Um, if you ever get any problems finding any of the tools in the tutorial, there's this find menu. So if I come down, where is it? Where is it? Get a mental block now, find menu. Um, you can type in the tool that you're looking for and it tells you where it is. So let's have a think, let's walk can I type in? So if I type in um, extrude, uh -huh. it doesn't always work, but it's worked this time. So you can see it tells you where you can actually go for the extrude, it tells you the menu set. So uh, uh, polygons, edit mesh, extrude. Okay, So uh, that's quite a useful thing to know as you're going through the tutorial. Um, and if you obviously not just this tutorial, but any tutorial, it doesn't always work that well. Okay, sometimes it can be a bit more um, fiddly. So, for example, it won't work with things in preferences. So, if you're trying to find, if, if it tells you in the preferences window there's something, you know, it's um, it won't always work. Another thing as well to do is to um, what, what I'd recommend. And these are these are facts, but these are recommendations rather than facts. You don't have to do this. But if you go into your um, your preferences and go to the um, Let's have a look here. Um, set your undoes. So um, that's a while since I did this. Where, where are the undoes? Oh yeah, undo at the bottom. Here we go. Um, what you can do is, I think the default. I can't remember what the default is actually. Um, I think make fifty. Is it fifty? Um, but you can increase that size. Um, but I think the default def default is off from memory. I can't quite remember. I've, it's such a long time since I've reset my preferences, um, but you might want to make sure that you 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 you, you change that. Um, make sure you've got a decent amount of undoes. Sometimes 50 isn't quite enough, and certainly make sure that it's on. Um, another thing that you want to do as well is um, often uh, under the selection menu. Anyway, so if I come into, um, if you, actually I'll, I'll, I'll explain this in a second. Um, I forgot where's my selection menu? There we go. Under my selection menu, there's this thing here called select with faces. Now, the default is select the whole face. Now, what that does, if I come in and uh, create myself a, let's go for a cylinder. Um, I'm going to reset the tool. So, I'm going to, let's look here, um, camera visions. Uh, I'm going to take that down a little bit to something like eight. Um, let's just create that. Okay, so if I come in and I, I select my face, you'll see that it's actually um, selecting it based on the actual face, the whole face. Now I think it's better in in, in sort of simplistic modelling terms. It, well, it's my work workflow preference anyway to select it with the centre, and that's how. And I think you should turn that on as well. So that means that um, when I'm selecting, I, I, I don't make mistakes when I'm selecting. So it doesn't select the whole face. It's, it's only when you select the center that it actually selects it. And that's useful if, you're, um, if you've got complicated selections to do. So for example, if I was going to select the bottom here, you can see the face, it highlights the face. But I can then make sure, if I drag that box around there with the select the whole face, it would select a lot of these as well. So it's, it's, just, it's a kind of convenient way of in, improving your selection methods. Okay. Okay, let's let's get on to the modelling. Let's remind myself what I want to tell you as well. Oh yeah, um, another thing that, you, that is highly recommended is with this modelling process that we're working with here today, um, it's important to be working at the origin. Um, so the origin is this square box. Uh, sorry, not square box. The origin is, is this kind of um, this this cross hatch here. 
with the grid on it. Um, and it's important, you notice that I've turned off interactive, make, uh, what's, it, what's the tool called? I've turned off interactive making, whatever it's called, I, can't, I never use it because I don't like it. Uh, when you basically drag and you can make, make cubes in other places, um, it's important with this type of method to have the, the pivot point in the center because we're going we're gonna to be deleting half of the, the mesh, so it's important to be working at the origin here. Um, also things like make sure you delete history on a regular basis. I am stating obvious things here, but you'll be surprised at the amount of people that don't do these things on a regular basis and you need to get into the habit of that, certainly from a good workflow of practice anyway. Um, okay, let me move on, let's start doing some modelling. So I've started off with a, um, a, a cylinder here, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, basically, so well, okay, let's get myself at the so, oh, hang on a minute, let's go back into object mode. Ah, that's interesting. What's going on here? There you go. So, <laughs> I've got myself a cylinder. <coughs> Excuse me. What I'm also going to do, for convenience for me, I'm going to um, I'm going to whack a, a, another material on here, um, which is transparent. And if you remember me talking about it last week about being able to model with this, um, I can vary the transparency of this to make it easy for myself. And it's obviously when as it gets more complicated, that'll become more useful. Okay, so uh, I'm, I'm just going to do a few things like scaling this to the right size, like so. Okay, I don't actually need to be in my um, my perspective view here. I can go to my quad view to sort of start this off. Um, if I bring this to the right type of size, now this is a kind of a um, what's it actually? Just realised I've put the wrong I've put the wrong the material on there. Let me just uh, go back and change that because. Um, I should have put that one on there because I put, I put the texture on it and I was seeing the, the, the character on there. Okay, um, so if I move this now um, to be the right kind of size, what I also want to do is a few things that sort of house cleaning things before I start this. If I go to my edge mo mode and I'm just going to delete these, well, actually, what I could, I will actually delete them. Um, I could just delete the ones that I don't want, but if I delete the top faces and bottom faces, I want to just make sure it's nice and clean before I start. And I also now want to just go in and uh, cut this little fella up a little bit before I start extruding. So if I come in and use my interactive split tool, what I can do is I can, oh, hang on a minute, I need to change the settings if I go back. Interactive split tool. That's an, a good example of if I reset that tool, that's the default settings. And what you'll find is if I the the, the, the snapping on this, if I zoom into this and, and look, uh, the snapping on this tool is a little bit of uh, um, a, not, not anomaly, but um, you know a pref preferred preference. So obviously the default, if I click this, it's going to make it quite easy for me to just cut this up in the way that I want it to. So I press G to repeat the tool. Okay, so I know that I'm going to delete half the mesh. So I can, I'm not, I'm not going to delete it yet, but I'm going to keep on working on this. But um, I'm going to, at some point in this tutorial, just get rid of that. Uh, I also know that I want to have a line going down the, the top of the arm. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to just cut across those. Press G to repeat the tool. Did I do that? If I just undo that to make sure that I've not made a mistake. Oh, there we go. Okay, so now we've got we've, we've cut this little fella up. Um, what I also need to do because I'm going to be I'm going to be clearly going to be putting some form in this character. Um, I want I want some some up and down um, rings in here. So if I use my um, insert edge loop tool, if I just get rid of that now, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to my quad view. Right. So again, this is where you need to be mindful of your character and what, what you're going to be doing here. Um, what I, what I want to do is I want to make sure that I, I want to extrude out from the arm, but I need a I need I need a line across here to have some deformation in the arm, some kind of make it round. Um, so I need to certainly put a line about there, and I, I certainly need a line down here. Okay. Now, obviously, depending on your character, mine's quite a thin, pretty straightforward character. I'll just try and make these nice and even as I come down here, like so. Hit return. I think I might have made a mistake on this. So look. Oh, I was in the side view in perspective. Yeah. What the hell's going on there? Okay. I'm going to go back. When I was doing that uh, interactive split tool, I made a mistake. Okay. Now, if I... 
it's quite useful that's happened in some ways because um, do you remember when I was clicking this and I wasn't sure it was working? Okay, just be mindful as you're going through your your character. Um, if I come back to my interactive split tool, uh, inter, where are we? Like so, what I'd obviously done is I, I'd clicked it somewhere else by mistake. Okay, so you need to be mindful as you're going through and just ah, let's try that again. This is where it's doing it in a really bizarre way. How bizarre. Yeah. I've not seen that one before. It just did the same thing at the top um, and the same thing at the bottom. So what I will do is, well, I'll do that later. Um, let's, let's get on with the tutorial. Um, I've just been informed that's a bug, by the way, um, which is a bit annoying. Um, there's other ways of doing that. I mean, I could, uh, well, I could actually, interestingly, rather than deleting all those faces at the top, I could have deleted just these edges around here. Um, anyway, I'll, I'll move on. Right, okay, so um, actually what I will do to test that out, I'm going to delete history to clean that model up, and I'm going to um, freeze transformations to clean the model up at this point. I'm just going to try that again, actually, and then take this point to save it. So I've already set my project up. Um, I'm going to save this as um, session zero one. Okay, and I'm going to I'm just going to try. I mean, what I would normally do is, is open this up again. To actually, interesting point actually there. What you could do, if, obviously, if I am at the very beginning uh, beginning of a model, and there's other ways to do that. Okay, which are quite simple. But um, rather than going around those problems, I'm going to I'm going to sort of demonstrate some of the kind of workflow things that you could do to rectify problems like that. Let's say you've got a model and you'd spent I don't know a few hours on it and you you get problems like that and you can get can figure out a way around it. Well, I mean there are always ways around problems, but um, it's often good practice to delete history, uh, save the scene, um, reset transformations. Okay, um, mainly be not mainly because sorry freeze transformations not reset them mainly because uh, you sort of clean the model up and something might have happened now it's probably unlikely it's going to work this time we'll see but um, another thing you can also do is you can actually open a brand new scene in Maya and sometimes and then import that 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 file okay so if I if I have this file here and I export it so I go file export um, wherever it is export where are we can't see the wood for the trees where are we Export selection. Okay, so if you if you exported that selection and saved it as something unique, like um, modeling zero one or something, um, then you can then open a fresh scene and re-import it. That can often fix problems with bugs. Okay, because what bugs are is that the, the, the computer is getting all confused with how it's doing things and it, it doesn't like it, so it's, it's, it's confused. Um, so that you know, but we'll we'll try it again and see if this works. If I um, interactive split tool, and what I'll also do is I've, I'll reset a tool which which I did anyway, but um, I'll just try to see. So if I come in, I think that's made a mistake. And you see, that you put those points in at the back, so it's, it's, it's not going to work this time. What I can also try and do, actually, if I press, um, I'll just try this as a, as a separate method. Okay, so I've done it that way now because what I was getting confused with is the going across this line, whereas as you saw a second ago, it was absolutely fine going across that one. So there's absolutely no difference in that whatsoever. It's just it, it, sometimes things get confused and it's, 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 it's almost certainly a bug. Anyway, let me move on. So before, I, as I did before, I put um, if I went in and I put a um, insert edge loop tool on there and I go to the quad view again to do the same thing I did before. So if I go in here um, and I go about there, uh, let's go for one there and there, and let, oh, we'll actually because I've made a mistake in that first bit. I'm gonna put one. I'm gonna put that there. The reason why I'm putting that one there is because I forgot to. Um, I'll just quickly rectify my original um, issue there. So if I go to some vertices and drag this one down a bit, because I was I, I need need that extra that extra space for the belt belt there. Okay, so right. Another good thing to do as well is, is is to sort of get a generalized shape. Okay. Um, actually, what I also need to do um, is come in here and okay. 
I've got a rough shape here that I'm pretty happy with for this first bit, and it's pretty simple. There's not much going on there at all. Um, what I now need to do is I need to stop thinking about the arms and the head and the, the, the legs, okay? So um, I'm going to start with the arms. So if I come in and grab, grab my face tools here, what I want to use is extrude, okay? So again, this is a very simple tool that, mo that most people have used before. What are you laughing at, guys? I'm always very curious when people are laughing. I'm also looking at something on Facebook on their on their pages. Anyway, right, let me move on because I'm recording this. Um, if I come in and go to my edit mesh and then use the extrude tool, okay, again, I'm just going to reset that to start off with. Use the default parameters and let me just um, apply, uh, extrude this. Now, I want to explain something here that, that, that most people will know, but I want to just highlight something that a mistake that people fall into. When you press extrude on something, what it actually does is it... it, it it puts extra faces around the selection that you've made. So you can see here, there's a little dot that's been put, which is actually the, set, the face center. I'm very curious why you guys are laughing. It's putting me off. Um, so what's, what's actually happening is, uh, the reason, and another reason why I like using face centers is you can actually see where you've got faces that you're not going to be using. Okay. So, but what what the mistake that sometimes people make when they when they first use this tool is they think, oh, well, nothing's happened, and they press extrude again. Okay. And you can sometimes make quite a few faces in the same place. I'm going to on purpose make a mistake here and press it again, and then I'm going to basically carry on and I'll show you how to rectify the problem in a minute. But I recommend you not making that mistake in the first place. Now, what's happening at the moment is I want I want to basically extrude an arm out here and start bringing this arm out. And I could, if I wanted to, bring another cylinder in and, and plug it into there. But I'm I don't want to do that because I'll, I then have to do an extra process of li linking that one in, which is no big deal, but um, it, it's, I'm trying to show you an efficient way of doing it. So if I start doing that, you'll see what happens. Now, clearly, that's not good because I, you know it's, it's not ideal, that situation. Um, so we rectify that problem by pressing this button up here. Okay. So if I press that button, that, that basically, rather than using the, 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 um, the face normals, the ver ver the face normals pushing the, um, the 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 polygon away from the normals. Um, it's going to use the the, the the sort of central. It's going to average the normals and it's going to use the, the sort of world coordinates, okay, rather than the local normal coordinates, okay. For those of you who don't know what normals are, uh, they're just they're, on every face on every vertex there is something called normal. It, it basically de defines how um, things are rendered, okay, um, and you can actually mess around with the normals and, and make sharp edges and soft edges. Um, but we'll get to that later. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drag this out. Okay, I'm not going to drag it all the way along. I could do. I want to. I want to basically start off by fixing some of the problems that we've got here. Okay, so if we come in here now and I maximise the screen, I've basically extruded this out. Now obviously we've got a square here, which isn't ideal, and also it's not the same shape as the arm. So I'm going to take it out to about here, and I'm going to use these tools. So you can see, don't mess around with these tools. These are kind of a, a little bit kind of. Um, they're almost gimmicky. Um, you kind of do most of it with a scale and, and change things. Um, but what I want, what my, my aim here is to make sure, if I come back to my, my, my static view, I want to keep this reasonably straight along the top, okay? But what I want to do is I want to scale this down and then move it up. Now, I haven't come out of the extrude tool yet. I've, I'm still in the extrude tool. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to make this... Now, if I had a side reference, I could make it, you know, but I don't need to. I know what, you know, I know... Roughly that people's arms at this stage are, are, are kind of going to be roundish. Um, so I've, I've done it like so. Okay. Now, before I go any further, I'm going to now rectify some of these issues that I've got. So because this is a, started from a cylinder, um, I'm going to come in and start to rectify some of this stuff. So I want to I try and model as effectively as possible I can. Okay, so I'm, I'm happy with that. Then what I can do is I can get my face again and grab the faces and press G to extrude um, and drag drag it out. So now what I would probably recommend at this point, rather than doing what I did before, um, often with arms, um, you have a thicker bit at the top and thinner at the bottom. Okay. Now I could extrude all the way along and do different parts and, and change the thickness as I go along. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to... I'm gonna, um, I'm going to make it thinner. Now, the reason why I've done that is so I can then come in and actually put my, if I go to my, yeah, if I go edit mesh and um, insert in edge loop tool, 
So I can then come in, and because I've put a gradient, that, that's slightly wider and that's slightly thinner, I can go down, and if I go to my front view, and just check out where the, the joint is going to be. So the, the middle of the arm is about here. I want to put a, f a reasonable amount in the arm, because I don't want to make sure that um, when I bend the arm, it's not going to have deformed too uncomfortably. I've still seen people in, in the second year making arms with just one one kind of no divisions in it, okay. And when you try and bend it, there's nothing. There's, there's nothing that you can bend the um, and, and and have some kind of interesting deformations going on in the arm. So you need to make sure that you put a good few, and I would recommend three. This is the point where the arm is going to uh, bend. Yeah. And this this is where you want to make sure that this 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 loop here will keep deformations in this this part of the arm. This loop here will keep deformations in that part of the arm. The ones in the middle aren't quite as important unless you're going to do muscle structures and stuff. Um, but if I come in and I and I sort of keep spacing that out here, there, there, and I need to one more in the in the sort of the the wrist. So the the key, the important part here is. Um, is this here essentially these these sort of these triangular areas and what you can also do I mean I'm not, not going to go into it too much now um, you can also angle these the the edge loop um, so you, you basically um, if I, I will actually do that if I come in and go my vertices and I go to my top view where's my top view so this is the front of the character um, and what I want people to do here is do something like this. Right now, the reason why this is effective, and I'm not again, this is more refining than than the actual modelling that I'm I'm not going to go into too much detail. But you get like a triangle there, which enables you when you're skinning. If you've got a thin arm and a triangle, if you think about it, if I put my arms like that, the the actual um, that you want that to be a decent crease, okay. But you also want to maintain volume behind here, okay. So when when I'm bending that, there's a crease there, which is what you want. But if you have triangles coming out, that can then go straight across and go straight across like that, and that's kind of what you want essentially. Um, okay, let me go into the the next bit here. So um, just, yeah, I want to fix that problem that I've got earlier on. So you can. Right, what's what's happening now? If I come in and go to my perspective view, and if I just just check quickly, that. So you can see I've put I've put on smooth view to sort of start getting an idea of the form of my character. Now I've obviously not done much modelling there. I've just kind of done a few extrudes and stuff. But you can see there's this extra line in there when I've gone to smooth that's not there when I'm in. Um, uh, what's the word? Um, Wireframe uh, kind of non-smooth essentially. Now what's happened, as I said before, you've got, you've got an extra um, uh, face in there as, as highlighted by the faces here. Now if you ever see that, these are always, these are quite often bad things. They can cause problems with the rendering of things uh, because they, uh, when you render stuff you can get like horrible lines in something that might appear to be nice and smooth, you can get horrible lines in something. Um, and it's, it messes the normals up, and it messes it messes texturing up, and it's it's not good practice really. And also, you, you you're wasting polygons where you don't need them. So we need to rectify these. So a, an easy way of doing this is coming in and selecting the area around where they are. I mean, ideally, you select just the vertices. I wouldn't recommend going and selecting individual or selecting because um, you need to grab all of them, okay? Because there are there are actually um, you know two two vertices on each point. Okay, so I've dragged it around. It doesn't really matter that I, I could have actually dragged the whole area here, because I, if I've got any problems in it, don't drag the whole mesh if you've got problems with it, because it doesn't always work. But we've got another tool here um, called um, hang on a minute, Merge. Where are we? Merge. Okay, so what this tool does is um, it's got a, these these grid units here are actually one unit. So if I typed in one here, I'll show you at one point zero zero one whatever it is, and press apply. That will merge everything into one point because the the tolerance is actually bigger than one unit. So everything that's one unit apart would merge into one. So we, obviously we don't want that. But the default is that zero zero one. Now that means that every if you got if you got two polygons, sorry, two verts on top of each other, that will merge them into one. So if I, I mean, normally you just select the area around here. But if I do the same thing again and press apply. You can see nothing appears to have happened, but if I go to my to this now, you can see it's got rid of those those faces in, inside it. Okay, if I just go before go back and do that, and before before I do that, hang on. Ah, my undo seems not to be working. 
Anyway, you, I think you get the idea. But what I was going to show you, I was going to go back to the before I did it and show you the, and, and pull the verts to, to prove there were two on top of each other. But I, you, you, know, you have to take my word for that because the undos don't seem to be working, which is bizarre. Okay, right, I'm just going to look at my notes, see what I'm doing next. open up another file. Let me just pause this recording for a second. Okay, so what you've got here is you've got a, a file which um, I've, I, I didn't want to spend all day um, talking at people. So um, I've, I've, you, know, you can see here that I've actually um, just um, carried on with the modeling process and um, yeah, so that's, that's it. And I've also made a sphere here. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm, I'm going to show you some more tools. So there's something called Bridge, which is quite a useful um, tool. Um, if you basically what it, what it does is it, it, um, I've, I've left a, a gap in between these the, the head and the neck. Now I could have just extruded this up here and snapped and stuff, which would have been fine. But um, it's quite a, a nice little tool. So if I go and, and get my edge tool here, now if I double click on an edge tool, um, some of you may or may not know this. Um, you can see it's selected all the way around that that edge. Okay. Now this is um, it's kind of like almost. It's a very. It's a, it's a great little tool that enables you to sort of select edge loops essentially. Um, but that goes all the way around, so that's not very useful. So what I want to do is I'm going to go across. Actually, I'll probably do this in the front view to make it a bit more accurate. I'm going to go across and I'm going to select across this area. Now, obviously, I don't want these these uprights, but I'm just going to go in and deselect them by pressing Control. Now, that's just a really quick way of selecting some polygons. Sorry, some um, some edges that I want. I've also got an, a, a slight problem here. Okay, so I didn't realise that that was there. So what I'm going to do? I'm going to do the same thing again. Get rid of that. And I'm, I am actually going to go in and add to this selection by pressing by pressing Shift. Okay, right. So what I've done is I've I've, I've now selected. The, the, this, the two areas that I want to bridge between. Now, what's important is you need to make sure that the the um, the two areas have actually got the same um, selections in, because obviously, what I'm going to do, I'm going to bridge between um, two equal areas. So, if I come into my um, edit mesh and where is bridge? There we go. Okay, so um, this bridge is essentially um, doing what I said. If I just reset that to show you the defaults. Um, I want to. I don't want to have five divisions in my neck. Okay. I want to still keep this quite simple. I can. All, I can. I can insert edge loop at any point. I can add some more divisions. I want to keep it reasonably simple. So I'm going to take that down to. I don't know. Three. No, yeah. Let's go for. Th let's go for two. Okay. Um, you can do all sorts of stuff in here. That I don't need to really talk about. That's pretty self-explanatory. But if I if I bridge that, you can see. Um, it comes across, and you can see it's it's quite a um, you know it needs some attention, um, and maybe two is too much there actually. I think it probably is, but I'll, I'll leave it for now. Um, but you know, but yeah, not not to worry about that. But I can then go in and actually use those those verts in in a kind of a, a useful type of way. Um, okay, let me just look refer to my notes. See what I'm going to talk about next. What I want to probably want to do actually before I do that, if I if I undo that. And I'm going to show you a slightly different way of doing that um, that some of you may that might be more appropriate for different circumstances. Okay, so if if you've got um, a situation where you have uh, I don't know a head with maybe more points more um, edges in than a neck, for example, which might might happen, you're not going to be able to do that, uh, and you have to deal with it in a separate way. Now you're going to have slight problems anyway because. Um, you want you have to connect those two things together, which means you'll have to create some triangular polygon uh, polygons at some point. But what you can do is use the extrude tool again. So if I um, edit mesh and then extrude, this time I'm going to just go straight down, and I'm going to scale it like so, roughly. Don't need to worry too much at the moment because what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in because they're actually because I've already combined this this head to this body. Um, I'm going to come in and I'm going to select the the vertice. Okay. Now, what I could do, I could just move and snap, press V and snap it, okay, and then use the merge tool, or I can come in and use this um, this tool called Merge Vertex Tool. Okay. Now, this is uh, it kind of does what it says. So, rather, this does the two th 
the the sort of two things at the same time. It will it will move it. So it's like a snapping the snapping tool, and I pressed V to to implement the snapping tool, or you can press the snapping tool up here. But if I if I can see what you can actually choose where it's going to snap to it. So if I come in and, and, and let go, like that. So this, obviously, if you extrude this out, it's got more more points than than the the neck. You can then decide quite easily where the triangles are going to be. So you can see what I've done there is, is, is pretty much the same as the bridge tool, um, but again, it depends on, on the circumstance to how you would use that, that particular tool. Okay, so that's, that's that. So I'm just referring to my notes um, to make sure that I'm... I've kind of I've kind of done um, pretty much everything that I wanted to show you to get to a certain level. But if I if I um, just open up the, another scene to show you kind of where using those the, only those sort of tools. Ah, oh, mirror. That's what I want. I'll de demo mirror. Sorry, last thing I want to demo. Don't save. Okay, so this is kind of the model that you can see. If I take it back to this simple topology, that that isn't that you're using kind of just those tools that I've shown you, okay, you can get to this kind of level, okay. Now, there's some areas that are more sophisticated, like the, the hands, that will take a bit more effort and time, and you need more no, more polygons, and some areas like the, the torso area that's pretty much similar, not far off what I've already done here, obviously I've not concentrated on the form, because that would take too long in the tutorial. But you can see, I've, getting to this stage, um, it's not technically that difficult, okay. The tools that I've shown you will enable you to get to this stage, okay. Um, but, what what you what I've done now is I've, I've basically I've deleted the character and I've I've made it um, so they've got half of the character. Now there are a couple of ways of of, of mirroring this character. Um, first thing you absolutely need to do, if you look here, obviously, I mean that's not all the history. I've, I've, I've continued to delete it as it goes through. But if I um, edit delete by type history, to start off with. Okay. Now at the moment, I need to check that these are all zero, which is important for mirroring. Also, I need to make sure that the um, the pivot point is, is is at the origin. So, if you come into um, freeze transformations to zero out everything, everything if you've moved it around, and reset transformations to make sure that the the pivot is at the zero, they're they're two things that you absolutely must do at this stage. Okay. Now, I can I can duplicate this. If I if I just duplicate this and um, then scale it in the negative one, so if I put a negative one in there, okay, that's duplicated. Okay, but what it doesn't do is it doesn't it doesn't update when I'm working with the other side. Now what I want is I want a situation where it's going to update with both sides. So I need to use um, instancing. Now if I duplicate and look at the options in duplicate special, I've already re I've already set these up um, in a previous demonstration, so they're already there. But if I if I uh, reset those settings, what you want to do these are the d these are default settings for duplicating something, which will just make a straight copy of it. If I press instance. Um, an instance is essentially something which updates uh, with, 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 with the other thing that you've instanced it with. So if you had a bar, for example, with a thousand bottles in it, and you know, you're not going to copy all those bottles, you want to make one bottle and you instance it and put the bottles around the, around the place, okay? And then you can update one of them and it will update all of them, okay? So this is what I want to do. I want to instance it and then and mirror it. So, um, so I've instanced it. Um, I want to mirror it in the negative one. So this is X, Y, Z. So I'm going to mirror it in the negative X. So across, and then if I press apply, like so. So what we can now do is if I can come in and if I go to my vertices and select vertices and carry on modeling with this character, it updates both sides. Okay, That's quite a useful tool in, the, in, in this kind of context. Mostly with, with modeling, um, people do this okay, and um, get to a reasonable stage, uh, and this is what we'll talk more about next week, but get to a reasonable stage, and then you put some differences in. Okay, Having models that are perfectly symmetrical isn't a good idea. Okay, This is a workflow practice thing that gets you, gets you reasonably there. Um, give you a bizarre example I was I was sat in a steam room a couple of weeks ago and I was sat there in you know nice and relaxed in that in my gym and I and I and I for some reason sat really square and I had my legs you know I was and I, and I sort of started thinking about the differences inside my body cause, you know bizarrely bizarre things I think about and I noticed and I know, know, know this anyway but my my right foot is is, a, is, is about half a centimetre smaller than my left foot cause I, I've, of the years, but it, it just struck me when I look at it, thinking, bloody hell, that's, it's quite remarkable how different it is, because you automatically think that you're, you, you, you automatically assume that you're even on both sides, but you're not, okay, um, so 
it's always a good idea to model and then to put some differences in and some very, very slight uh, idiosyncrasies to make it more human. Okay, let me just uh, check my notes to make sure I've not missed anything before I, I go on. Um, there is a few tools which I, I could demonstrate, but I've been talking for long enough now, and I don't want to sort of let you, let you get on with stuff. Um, but um, that are in the tutorial, I, I can't demonstrate now. But um, you know, things like cutting faces tool, you can cut straight across um, things. Um, you know, you can offset edge loops. Um, there's some sort of nice tools. So these are kind of some of the tools that I would have used in in, in this process. Um, you know. Um, you can sort of average vertices as well. If you get any problematic areas, you can do things like averaging them out. Um, mesh. I will just show you quickly the the, the sculpt geometry tool. So if I um, if I come into my mesh and then this sculpt geometry tool, this is quite useful. If you um, well, it's quite useful as a thing. Don't use it a lot for this push and pull. Models look a bit crap when they when you use push and pull and look like they've made them using push and pull. But what is quite useful is this smooth and then relax. Okay, so what you've got here is you've got a tool. If I press B and make that larger and smaller, you've got a tool which. Why is it not working? There. You've got a tool which um, will average out those vertices, okay, or smooth them out. So, certainly in certain areas, I mean, you can see here that if I come to the back of the head here, um, it's a little bit messy at that, that stage. Now, it won't do anything for the, 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 the lines that are on, on the edge here, but it will do. It will start helping you resolve some of these ge geometry issues. If I press B, make this quite smaller, I can start making sure that I've got a nice topology here, and I can start uh, basically uh, smoothing some of this stuff out, and what it's doing is just, just averaging. And certainly from a point of view, if I, if I, if I put the um, smooth shaded on, and you can see, um, you know, you can sort of see sometimes where where the areas are. Um, well, I can probably see more in in in, in the this view in the um, without smooth shaded. But certainly for places for areas that you need to kind of make sure a nice got a nice form, you can use that tool. Don't go over the top with it. I mean, the you can just, you can change the opacity and you can change various different bits and bobs on there. But um, it's something which um, you want to be very reasonably careful. But your objective here is to make sure that you've got a decent character that's got that's quite low poly and it, that's kind of the, 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 the vertices are in the right type of places. So when you smooth it, um, you know, you can start getting more sophistication. Um, that's kind of where I'm going to leave that today. Um, what I'd like people to do, I'd like to be able to get up to this stage by next week. I know it's a big ask, and I know there's a lot of work there, but to be honest, it's probably about two days' work. Maybe, maybe a day. Maybe it depends on what kind of character you're doing. Um, but I'd like you to try and keep up with what we're doing. Okay. So if anyone wants to get on with that, that would, that would be great. Okay. Are there any questions, by the way? Say so no. I want you to shut up. <laughs> okay. <laughs>